Hello everybody, my name is Florianten. I was very happy to be on stage again. Yeah, and and they went they went well. I mean, especially the second one in Helsinki. Uh, that was fun. Uh, voice was really there. I was still a bit sick, but uh, you know, um, uh, much easier than the first in Tampere. I have to say that was very very um, scary to do because I. Uh, I could barely stand just a few hours oh before I had no energy my voice was hoarse from getting um, stomach flu and uh, I did not sleep so I um, that was very challenging but I despite everything think it I pulled through well beginning was hard but then I got the energy from the audience and from there it just built up to be a, a good show yeah I can't really fake it so in the beginning I felt like I had to fake it um, and I could feel that the voice was there, so I started to get really worried, like, uh, it's a two-hour show, um, and unlike Kadri, it's quite heavy singing work. <laughs> yeah, you can't just do it, but I agree on the end of faking it, but I got the energy from the audience and then there was no faking, it was just all real. Yeah. I got a, tw a B12 injection, uh, so it's a vitamin and it, it gives you this instant uh, energy which the day after is gone, I feel horrible, but it really worked for the show, so that okay. really helped me, yeah. <laughs> Let's not forget, this is my second uh, studio album with the band. You know, I've, I'm only, I'm all, this year I, we can celebrate 10 years of me and Nightwish, but it's the second album only, a studio album, and uh, for Kai it was the first. So where he, he, you know, as a member also played on, so to make that gold, that is special. So even if it's for, you know, Thomas and, and Empo maybe, less special it's for always it's for everybody always very special because that it's still our fans making this happen you release an album and especially we released the album and then the pandemic hit you know we or, or just after it hit basically so there's a lot there was a lot of insecurity around this album it's not a given fact that your yeah, night we shall send platinum here in finland not at all and we did so yeah we are super super proud I started working with Joost and we've been uh, really working on, on trying to find my sound but him coming from metal and me coming from metal made it very hard to kind of make the step towards away from that and so I contacted Gordon Grothede whom we together actually worked with on the last After Forever album who has been working with pop more than with metal actually and uh, I told him I'm searching for the sound and it's hard to find and I wonder if you have time to sit with me and our cooperation kind of really launched uh, the sound uh, that, that I, I wanted to have. Together we wrote Fire, the song that has been released. And so uh, the stuff that I've been doing with Joost probably will never actually make the album, but he was an essential part of getting the ball rolling. The scary is maybe not the right word, but I found it very important to find something that fits me and realize that, that that's a process. So. Um, um, yeah, you need to write a lot of different kinds of songs, write it with different people. So next to Joost, I also wrote with another Dutch songwriter. Some songs will make it, some, some will not. And um, uh, yeah, it's, it's important to take your time for it. And uh, yeah, it was a very, a very interesting journey to be on. Like, yeah, it, 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 I can only, I could in the beginning only describe what I didn't want. And from there you kind of need to find something that you do want. I want it to be less is more. I don't want it to be rock. I don't want it to be metal. Um, I'm not going to be Miss Pop, you know. I'm not going to be your metal Britney Spears. <laughs> no metal Barbies. No, <laughs> you know, I don't know. So th there was a lot of no, I don't want to do this. I don't want to do that. But um, I want to be able to really use my voice without it becoming too much. You know, pop music, it doesn't always facilitate as much space music musically as metal actually does so in a sense you kind of simplify a concept that i've been able to you know with nightwish we don't simplify anything and <laughs> less is there is nothing less is more it's more is more so how do you how do you make that more compact and how do you show what you can do without showing off or over uh, unnecessarily over complicate things and yeah, that was definitely a journey and um it um, it happened so that I've been talking with all of this uh, to Gordon Grothede, the producer, and told him about those things I don't want and what I would like, give or take. Uh, can't we book a time together? It would be so much fun. So we were looking into that and as we were matching our schedules, he said, you know, you've, 
after our talk, I had this song in my head that I wrote with and for somebody um, a while ago that I think could actually fit you. I'm gonna check with her if I could play this for you. And so he did, and I was like, yeah, this. So um, we kind of formed it more towards my voice, recorded it, and then it was like, yeah, this is the, the kickstart actually of, of what I consider my sound. And from there, you know, you can search. And, and after that, together we wrote Fire. So yeah, it had to start somewhere. And it was very cool that the lady who, um, who co-wrote it and was supposed to have it on her album said, it's better for your voice, you should definitely have it. So that's super cool because, you know, songs are so personal. And I had to step away from the idea that I would have to write everything myself, yes. or at least co-write. So I had to let that part go. Like, yeah, this is this is definitely my song, but I didn't write it. But hey, I've, I'm doing that in Nightwish too, and I totally find my way in singing it so that it's as much my songs as the stuff I write. So I was totally cool with that. Well, I, you know, I do feel that as I I've been growing as a singer throughout the years, much more than I have as a songwriter. And so when I started picking it back up, it started with a lot of insecurities. Yeah, what do I really have to add to the world? Especially if you sing in a band with a songwriter such as Duomas Holopainen. <laughs> so what do I have to add? And I started with my simple core progressions and my ideas. And uh, it was very cool to see that, yeah, but I, I have a style of my own. Actually, I do have something to say. and. I feel that, yeah, together with the right people, I can actually write cool songs. So that is also how Fire came to be. Yeah. Um, and I'm super proud of that. And it's really fun to, yeah, keep growing in that too and find new securities and more of my sound and my do's and don'ts in that too. Yeah, it's interesting that you of all people have like imposter syndrome as well. It's yeah, of course, <laughs> but it, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm as human as anybody. Yeah. And uh, it's great to become, you know, to become good in something, something that I did actually be, you know, I was born with this voice, lucky me. Then I had the opportunity to actually study it and, and get better at it. Yeah, and the rest is a lot of hard work, but um, yeah, that is something that I'm sure about, but there are many other things that I'm not, just like <laughs> anybody else. <laughs> it really changed. Now it became top song and I'm, I'm hitting all kinds of lists and charts and yeah, it, it's a whole different ball game, but this is also not metal. Yeah. So, um, and I, I understand the, the difference. Of course, I do. Um, Best of Zangers did not only open a market for me, but it also opened a market for Nightwish. So even if that's um, our songs might not be played in, on the on the radio as easily as my pop song now does, it's still something that is much more. Uh, yeah, it gets much more airplay, gets much more attention, is more looked upon uh, by the Dutch audience as something that is not directly, not for me because it's metal. And just that difference in approach is massive for me because that's the thing I was so bothered about in that interview and that has been bothering me throughout my entire career. As soon as it gets labeled metal, it's not cool and it's never going to get any commercial attention and uh, it never gets the chance uh, just by labeling it. And first of all, I didn't want to ever label anything. That's something the media does. And then they've labeled it and said it's not cool without even, <laughs> even hearing it, without further ado. And I think there, um, something has changed at least a little bit. So that's super cool. And it's nice to see uh, someone like me that maybe has been doing metal and is more known for that than anything else can do something on the side and be respected for it as a musician and uh, as an artist in total. And that that is a recognition that I find super super special because that is something that has been earned by by making music and by by speaking up and saying hey guys you know hey we're we're doing this hear me out now and they did so that's super cool i i'd like to think so at least that's also why i got the pop prize in the netherlands which is a huge recognition for a dutch artist um it was really because i dared to step out of my comfort zone and say guys why aren't you hearing my music and yeah, become that ambassador of metal, as they, they called it, and, and that it had its results, you know, even for people that would, would normally really say, yeah, but it's just not for me. Is it? Have you ever heard it? No, but it's, and then there comes this idea that they had it. I managed to kind of change the idea of something that is a total no to a maybe, and yeah, also towards Nightwish, you know, maybe I should actually listen to it. And there were so many people that had the reaction. I didn't know it was like that. Yeah, that's beautiful. Yeah, 
so first ideas for music and um, uh, as the song was progressing as it was building itself with us you know it's, it's, it's this process that we were in uh, ideas for the lyrics came so as um, Wouter Hardy and Gordon Grothead who I co-wrote co it with were fine-tuning ideas building up um, towards the chorus and they, and they were um, you know with the outlays that we made were fine-tuning that I started to write the lyrics and then we put things together and um, I can't really remember because sometimes when you write and the melodies come with those melodies come also words or at least um, part of words that would be cool to have in there um, and sounds uh, if fire because it's such a you know maybe that word came from the get-go I, I honestly can't remember because it's a it's this process that we were in but it, it definitely grew together and it's it for me at least very soon within the song as it was building I felt like this needs to be about the pandemic like okay here comes another song about the pandemic but I wanted to t stay in the yeah in the metaphors of, of fire and and that you know we want to have life back in our society we want to be able to go back out and live our lives to the fullest be back on fire and from there um, yeah it was almost it almost wrote itself <laughs> yeah it surely opened my eyes to the whole world of social media and indeed as you said I, I normally wouldn't have time for it and it's, it's to be seen how much time I will have left for it but now it's such a vital part of my life it sort of got more integrated I got more used to it um, I enjoyed it more because for me it was something that other people do and um, and I wasn't actively into it um, I enjoy it more myself now as well um, so that's that has changed and um, but I, I'm not sure if I changed as a person but it once again does prove that anything can happen in life um, yeah <laughs> you can be prepared for stuff like this but yeah you need to be able to kind of go with whatever life throws at you and that's a, that's a good life lesson once again there so I actually read quite often that pe people were expecting something like it and that they were not disappointed and that they love how the song builds and they find it very much floor and that was the biggest compliment because that was the thing I was looking for like okay the sound hey where we talked about earlier like it, it not this and not that and it should be something like that it has to fit to me it has to sound like me how does that even come and for some reason this song sounds exactly like me and people really felt that so that yeah. was wonderful to get back from 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 my audience i think even though it's it's a pop song it, it still maybe has this more rock or metal edge that maybe is just embedded in your voice or something i don't maybe know maybe it is because i don't sing heavy yeah, until no. just a couple of notes <laughs> yeah. there's not a heavy guitar in there at all no. But I know what you mean, and that's yeah. that's the cool thing with this song. Yeah, yeah. I think maybe your your voice is just has become metal or something. Yeah. <laughs> or it's the association you make, yeah. you know. You might listen to it completely different than somebody yeah. that got to yeah. know me through Best of Zangers, you know, yeah. the Dutch TV show, or maybe now the people in Germany that will get to see me from the from the German version for Sing Mine and Song. Uh, people that usually listen to pop music will perceive the song maybe differently, and people that don't know me from before I will perceive it differently yeah, that's cool we did ask you know our fans on social media like play the song to your non-metal uh, friend and see what he or she has to say that was super cool to see what came back from that yeah <laughs> I have to honestly admit that I spent very little time looking at those because I just don't have that kind of a time yeah, <laughs> yeah I really don't I my, my life is so incompletely over full that I sometimes friends or family uh, or colleagues write things to me like did you see that this you see that and I never actually make it to see them all but if I would I've been trying to see a couple where I want to have I love you know I'm a, t a vocal technique nerd so if anything I want to see an actual vocal coach react technically but it sometimes takes me forever to go through a super long video where they talk about anything but that <laughs> and uh, that maybe is interesting for other people I'm not judging it like that but I can't really get out of what I want to hear I want yeah I'm curious about their techni technical analysis in that sense so that that would be fun to see more yeah I I can't believe it because it's it's such a you know things come full circle kind of thing because I was asked for Bing Pop into a 2020 for my solo thing and I could, it's such an honor like damn you know solo I was bull I was almost scared about it but of course it didn't happen then it was postponed to 21 
But then Nightwish got booked for 22 and that kind of meant that my, my slot disappeared. And it's hard to be disappointed if, if Nightwish can play <laughs> ping pop. So I wasn't, but of course I was like, well, I still hope I can do this solo one day. And uh, as I want to release an album in 23, I was like, yeah, you never know, maybe 23 then, and I have a whole band and a whole tour. And, uh, and then this kind of happened. Like, yeah, you can also do solo now. Yeah, I'm just gonna take this, it's crazy. I can do Pink Bob both solo and with band on one day. I first had to do check if I how long the sets were because I don't want to overdo it. You know, yeah. like I don't want to get tired on my solo show and then <laughs> not be fit enough for for Nightwish. That would that would be unforgivable. But uh, both is an hour, and our regular Nightwish shows are two hours, so I should be fine. So we're looking into when we can play when Nightwish is not playing. That is that is the the puzzle we're we're facing right now. Um, there are a few things like Pink Pop and. Uh, uh, a few small, so, small, some solo things that I would like to do this year, um, but uh, focus more on when there's a whole album uh, for the next and and first really also do this Nightwish world tour because actively touring solo and Nightwish at the same time is something I don't ambition at all and it has to stay fair to myself, my family, and both yeah, the people yeah. I work with solo and of course Nightwish. So let's let's do this Nightwish world tour, finish the album and more in 23 for solo tours. It was so nice to kick it off. Very, 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 you know, unfair. I had to be so sick that I could barely re actually enjoy it to the max, but uh, it is now kickstarted and there is not a government in the world that will keep me away from my stage now. <laughs> <laughs> Our last like proper bus tour with Nightwish was when we did the European show, the European leg of the Endless Forms Most Beautiful tour which ended in December 2018. <laughs> so yes, put me in a bus. <laughs> Nothing more than you have. He has, <laughs> and I can't wait to hear it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but it's super cool that, you know, he he just got inspired uh, and kept writing. Uh, that's just awesome how that works. Yeah, it seems yeah. very fast for him as well. <laughs> yeah, well, he's had two years, you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, not more than I'm super excited to come back out and super proud of my first solo song. I'm so happy it got received so well, despite it being so different from anything I've ever done before. So thanks for having me.